Hi guys, I'm Vitaly and I wanted to present you about bots. So, what are chatbots? Chatbots is, first of all, a regular chat in which one of the participants is not really human, it's actually a computer program. So, what can it do? It can perform various activities by command. So for example, you can ask it, bot, please order me food. And you can say, I want to schedule a meeting, or I want to call a cab. Additionally, it can do passive actions. For example, it can translate. If someone says something in foreign language, it can translate to your language. It can convert currency, the same principle. So if someone says, uh, I don't know, five rupees, it can translate it automatically to your currency. If someone says a word that it, the bot knows is complicated and is usually not used, it can translate it using a dictionary. Now, so, now that we know what are bots, why do we need them, right? So you could use a dictionary, you can use a dictionary app, or you can go to Wikipedia, or you can convert, convert currency in Google. Why do you need the bot for? So the bot have some advantages. It's in line, it's, it's in the context of the conversation. So for example, if someone says, I bought something for 15,000 rupees, you have no idea if it's a lot or not. You, you know, you don't know if you should congratulate him or to say, well, that's a bad deal. So you could check it on Google, but a lot of people are lazy and they won't do it. And second of all, even if you do it, it won't be nicely presented in the chat. So now you can see in the context of the chat exactly how much those 50,000 rupees were and you can, you know, respond accordingly. Additionally, the mere fact that it was in the chat allows you to treat it as, for example, as your history. So if you go back a year ago and you see these messages and you know what the value of the rupee was at this time, otherwise you'd have to do a bit of a complicated process of understanding what exactly he paid. You can mix human information and digital information easily with bots. So for example, if a customer talks to, a, let's say, a support bot and he asks, what's my bill? And the bot can say, because, you know, he's a bot and he can connect to the database and check, and it says, easily, it's 4,000. And the customer says, wait, what? We agreed on $100 maximum. How can it be? So the bot can't help at this point because, well, he's a bot, you know, he can only get exact values. So at this point he gets a human and the human says, well, it costs so much because uh, we made a mistake and maybe an apologize and I have to check it. And, you know, probably he still wouldn't help you, but you got like an empathic human that can understand you and you feel. So on one hand you saved some money and you didn't, um, you know, you, you didn't need the bot to answer the simple questions, but you can answer the more complicated questions, right? Some more advantages. The bots are pluggable basically by nature. What it means is that we can extend the functionality of the client without changing its code. And a lot of the samples you're gonna see soon are didn't involve changing the client at all or making really minor changes. You provide a single interface. So just like a user would rather browse using the same browser multiple sites, he would also rather use his chat client for as many things as possible, as long as it's, you know, comfortable. So, 
basically we allow the user to stay in the client well longer than he intended and provide his comfort by staying there. It's just text. So the fact that bots are textual beings and you can chat with them easily gives you all kind of accessibility values. They're very important. For example, you can easily copy your conversation with the bot. You ordered pizza, you can put it aside to remember what kind of pizza you ordered. And if you want the same pizza next day from the bot, you just copy this order command and he orders the pizza for you. Voice bots. So voice bots are basically like chat bots, but for voice. So if you got two people talking, the bot joins in and it's just another voice participant like in a voice conference, but it's there's a bot behind. So what can it do? It can do all the same things we discussed before. You can order food, you can tell bot order me a cab now while you're talking with your friend and he will understand it and order you a cab. Additionally, it can do passive activities. For example, it can record the call. It can transcribe the call. So if you say something, you can get the text out of your speech and provide that. It can translate the call, so the same concept, you're talking to someone who speaks Chinese and you don't know Chinese and he can translate it. So you know that's nice but it's definitely not perfect, we have a lot of problems with bots. One of them is that syntax is hard, so people like to you know talk, they don't like to do slash pizza toppings equals true order now okay you don't, you don't want that the way we can solve it is we can prov provide NLP natural language processing instead of saying slash pizza I can say I want a pizza now please and he'll take all the re relevant information and get that pizza for me we can use buttons so if the bot asks a question we don't force him to we don't force the user to actually type it. We can present buttons, the user will click on them and that's it. Another option is background bots. So you, you don't actually need anything from the background bot except be there and he'll help in any way he can. So you don't know you don't need to know any kind of syntax. You have options. So we discussed how bots are mainly using text to talk, but some things are not good for text. You know, like you can't describe a pizza in text. You could say the pizza is amazing, it's round, it's red, it's got all kind of amazing toppings. But as a user I'd rather just see a picture. So first of all, rich text lines can present pictures. To go can present pictures, WhatsApp can present pictures. So bots can do that too. Bots can also use ASCII graphics and we can even use custom UI specifically for bots so bot can you know draw some kind of minimal UI inside the chat the way Slack is doing right now. Speech specific problems. So I discussed voice bots and voice bots work by recognizing your speech, and speech is hard. We have accents, we talk, too, we talk too slowly, we talk too quickly, like probably you have some trouble with my accents right now. It's not perfect. And above it all, we also have equality problems. We got PSTN, we got bad, bad reception. So sometimes the actual quality of this Transcription is not very good. Now let's talk about how bots integrate into Go and what basically we did here in To Explore. So, what we have is basically a regular To Go client. It's written in Python and uses To Go SDK and it runs on CentOS Segway. 
the bots we have. We have a survey bot. So what it does basically is present a survey as SMS and allow you to reply to the survey with easy buttons. What it allows you to do is provide a user with a really easy ability to reply to surveys. So if I get a survey that says go to a link, I will probably hesitate. But if I said, but if it says something simple like what, are, what do you prefer, yes or no, or I have buttons to click on, I probably will click. So let's see what it looks like. So the user receives a question and you can see he has two buttons in the bottom. So we can easily press that he wants red wine. And now the bot got the question. He says thank you to the user. Okay. And we can see that the data is collected inside Google Docs. Support bot. We described one previously. Uh, it provides the ability for a user to uh, troubleshoot his phone, to get information. It can handle multi-step scenarios. For example, have, if the user has trouble that requires extra steps, the bot can help that with it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so the user said help and he got a message and again he has easy buttons he can press on and he asked for a balance and he got it. Now he says I've lost my phone and the bot will provide, a, you know, it can ask him if you want him to call yes or no and if the user says yes he will call. So you don't need a human to handle this kind of issues, you got the bot to do it. Translation bot. Translation bot allows you to translate the, the text in line, like we said before. Okay, so here's an example. I have a, someone who says hola, and I don't know who is it. So he says something in Spanish, and I have no idea what it is. So I'm saying, okay, I'll, let, let me just add a bot to help me here. I'm doing the command to add a bot and the bot joins and now as soon as he says something in Spanish the bot translates it and I know it's my best friend from Spain and I can talk to him. So next example is a voice bot. So what it does is first of all it allows us to use to go to have and to have audio conferences without changing to go. So the way it works is we have a bot inside a group and we ask him to call us, the bot calls and he connects all, all the people in the room. He can record the calls, he can transcribe the calls and the way the transcription works is using both Google Speech Engine and IBM's Watson. And here is an example. So I'm here with offer in the room and I say call and the bot starts calling us. Hello. Hello. Ken. Ken. Huh? Ah. No. No. I want, I want pizza. pizza. How are, How are you? you? I'm, fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay, so now once we hang it up, we can get the transcription of what we discussed and, well, you can see for yourself. Uh, that's Google's transcription and it's actually better. Uh, we also get transcription for from IBM Watson. Unfortunately, Watson doesn't understand very well what we said. So now we get also a link to the file and we can download it. Additionally, 
we get a server question, what was better, Google or WhatsApp? So that's bots working together to create a sort of applicate experience, which is a bit like an application by itself. So now let's talk how it's relevant to FedEx. So you can make for FedEx your own bot. Some ideas, you can make a sport updates bot. So it's a bot that sits in a room and as soon as there is some progress in a game that all the group enjoys, he can tell you about it. You can do a Wikipedia bot, a bot that searches for Wikipedia topics that are discussed and explains them. So for example, if someone mentions some some foreign country, you can explain what the country is. A bot that creates polls. You got, a, you got 50 people in a room and you ask what time you want to meet. Everyone says when they want to meet and the bot records it and you can then see what each of the people said and you know what, what the majority said so you don't have to count what 50 people typed. The way you build a bot basically is you need Python, you need to clone the repository of the bot and you put your to-go to -go number and you run it. It's pretty simple. And if you need my help, I'm here to help. Thank you.